For more on the story, we are now joined via Skype by Ronald Ibole, who is Amnesty International's regional researcher for Tanzania and Uganda. Ronald, thank you so much for joining us on The Globe and a very good evening to you. Now, rights group Amnesty International has challenged Ugandan authorities to drop the charges against uh, um, Stella Nyanzi. Now, the reasoning behind uh, these charges, do you think uh, they, they stand? Is it legal for her to be held? One, uh, thank you for having me this evening on the show, on uh, your news. And, uh, Yes, uh, Uganda has uh, Computer Misuse Act, which was uh, uh, which came in force in 2011, and which has offences under Section 24 and 25, which uh, she has been charged with. These offences, of course, are uh, uh, misuse of uh, computer gadget to uh, commit cyber harassment and offensive communication, and so. Uh, what we are actually calling for is that the law that is being used, the Computer Misuse Act, contravenes the Constitution of, of Uganda, which in Article 29 gives the right to freedom of expression. Will this be adhered to with regards to Uganda and the laws and uh, obviously with now these uh, different uh, laws and uh, articles being put in place, is this enough for your calling for her release? Will this be enough for um, the government and the prosecutors to release her? We are basically not calling for her release because uh, Stella Nyanzi herself uh, has rejected bail before in November when she was taken before court. And so we're just not calling for her to be released because uh, if it was up to her, she would have taken the, the bail option. But we're actually asking for dismissal of those charges because those charges uh, contravene the Constitution and contravene uh, regional and international obligations that Uganda is, is party to. So by dismissing the charges, then the discussion should now come into uh, the, the legality of or constitutionality of the Act 2011, which uh, has already been challenged by a group of civil society organizations before the Constitutional Court in Uganda. Now, do you think that her denying herself bail or not agreeing to, um, to get bail and to remain in prison, will this be enough? This is a statement on its own. Will this be enough for her to get a point across and to garner support um, locally and internationally? Of course, uh, she has a reasons why she wants uh, to, uh, to fight her battles from uh, uh, inside prisons, inside, inside Luzira prisons. But again, uh, one of uh, her concerns is that uh, this war or this, uh, the challenge that she's, she's facing is not just with the state, but it is also for the society to really understand her style of activism, whereby she has taken up to a uh, radical way of activism to communicate uh, her message and uh, to really speak against uh, repression and oppression in Uganda. And so it is also something that she wants as she fights the battle from Luzira prison for the society to also understand and come to appreciate where she is really coming from. Because uh, with the kind of charges that she has and uh, the kind of uh, societal impression of um, even the utterances uh, or the statement that was made through a Facebook post it would really put her at a place whereby not really everyone understands her. But again, uh, when we call for the dismissal of the charges and if the courts really uphold the rule of law and call and go for uh, dismissing the charges, then she will really have a strong place and she will have a place to actually speak uh, for the society to also just get where she is coming from. Now, Ronald, uh, her, this is the second time she's been charged with insulting President uh, Yoweri Museveni and violating his right to privacy. You just mentioned the fact that there may be um, a lack of understanding of her radicalism or her fight in terms of what it is exactly that she's trying to put across in Uganda. Do people understand 
or are they interested in her activism and is she able to to filter through um, to all the people in Uganda who do have access to um, social media and the internet I I I wouldn't speak on behalf of, uh, you know, the, the general mood of the public, but you do understand that uh, earlier this year, Uganda started implementing uh, um, uh, social media tax uh, law whereby users of social media are taxed for every day that they're using uh, their gadgets to actually access social media. So you already see a situation whereby there is an intentional effort by government to reduce uh, the kind of uh, online uh, online pool and so you may well argue that you know uh, instances of uh, having bloggers such as uh, Dr Stella Nyanzi and other who are vocal in Uganda they may not really receive much of uh, uh, a as in a following, because there is already a bit of restrictions with uh, this, the implementation of the social media, the, the social media tax, and and other regimes of law, including uh, the misuse of uh, the, the Computer Misuse Act of 2011, which most definitely is already hindering other people from even responding and supporting her. Of course, you have other people that have openly come to support her in the diaspora and others within Uganda. So it is actually a mixed uh, kind of uh, reaction that we're receiving from uh, the general uh, Ugandans. But of course, the, the hindrance with all this has been the legal regimes that Uganda has in place that uh, really limits freedom of expression. International pressure from the international community. Has there been any response apart from um, the, your Amnesty International? And have you been able to uh, speak to Dr. Nyanzi with regards to her stay in prison and uh, what it's like and how far she's willing to go? Of course, uh, with regards to international pressure, there are many different organizations that are speaking about uh, this issue. Of course, Amnesty has remained uh, consistent uh, since her first arrest, her previous arrest in 2017 and all the threats that she's been facing. And we are speaking again now because uh, this is an issue that uh, really needs to be brought out so that uh, you know the world sees this uh, suppression in, in what it is. Uh, whether we've been able to speak to Stella Nyanzi, we've been in contact with uh, the legal team that uh, is very close to her, the legal team that uh, is, is, is working on this case, and they've been giving us updates on how she is. Of course, uh, uh, this morning she was able to talk uh, to them and just, uh, you know, uh, give them her resolute uh, to continue fighting this from from within uh, Luzira. And so we expect that uh, the strategy is that uh, a, a, as we wait for the court to hear the application for dismissal of, dismissal of the charges that uh, the lawyers made today, uh, then she will continue being at Luzira maximum prison. So the next hearing where the court will be, will be hearing uh, this application to dismiss the charge will be 10 of January. And so we are looking at uh, having uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Nyanzi possibly spend uh, Christmas and uh, New Year and the holidays basically uh, in, in prison. Alvana, this is a developing story and we will be watching very closely. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll leave it there for now. That's uh, Ronald Ibole and he is Amnesty International's regional researcher for Tanzania and Uganda. And he was joining us via Skype.